and uh, we reworked it uh, so it can be used for more than was fingerprinting. So uh, I will show you uh, that. You can follow me on Twitter with uh, the two uh, name. Uh, Network Recon is where I will release the tool. So if you want to be informed of the release, you can follow Network Recon. So where am I? Uh, I have uh, more than 10 years of uh, experience in information security. Maybe uh, I'm most well known on, under the handle uh, Gomor. Uh, so that's my main uh, portal around security is gomor.org. I also have a blog uh, only in French, sorry, uh, because I don't speak a word of Spanish. I prefer to say it. Uh, so if you have some questions at the end, uh, I can't address in Spanish. Um, uh, so the blog is Protocol uh, Hacking. I also started a web hosting company a few months ago, which is called SecureSci, only for French people. And uh, my last project is about uh, networkrecon.com, uh, where I want to release uh, as much tool as possible regarding uh, network reconnaissance, which is a field I really love, because I'm a, a protocol hacker. I love to implement protocols uh, the most difficult protocol I had to implement was OSPF for uh, open shortest uh, pass first. It's a protocol used in Cisco routers. And by speaking this protocol, you can inject routes in the whole network. So that's interesting to do many the little attacks within a corporate network, for instance. Um, so the subject of today is about uh, NetCNFP, another Perl module. Uh, I have two big versions of uh, this tool. Uh, when I say CNFP, I'm speaking about the old one, and when I say CNFP3, it's the new one with more features. And I uh, also love FreeBSD systems and uh, to develop in Perl. So the agenda for today, uh, first thing, what is operating system fingerprinting uh, would be quick. Uh, I will then spoke, uh, speak about current tools and their limitations. So why did I develop another OS fingerprinting tool? And uh, introduce the approach I had for CNFP, show the new matching algorithm for CNFP3, and uh, I will do some demos before introducing the, the new architecture of CNFP3 and again doing some, some demos and conclude. So what is operating system fingerprinting? So my definition is the art of remotely identifying the nature of an operating system by analyzing how its TCP IP stack is crafted, crafting network packets. So it's really how the bit and bytes are assembled by the stack. Uh, there is two main approaches in OS fingerprinting. You have the active uh, fingerprinting where you, s you send some probes to a target, specifically for probes, and you analyze a response to build a signature. So the analyst decides of the format of the request. It's very important. Compared to passive mode, where you are just listening to the network, you don't control how the frames are sent to the target, so you don't control how the responses are, are built also. And that's very important distinctions between the two modes. Um, and of course, these two approaches give different signature. We will see that. Sometimes I have the question, why not simply using banner, uh, banner grabbing, grabbing for a finger printing? I would say if you have the choice, uh, you can more trust the, the banners than the TCP IP stack itself. So if you have the choice, use that option. But it may be correlated with uh, the TCP IP fingerprint of the target to have more insight. So what is CNFP? So before the, the version 3, uh, an operating system tool, uh, a fingerprinting tool written in Perl. So yes, probably the best language, that's, that's my view. That's, that's the language uh, I master the the better, so it's easier for me to write in there. Uh, it's module-based for integration in other uh, projects. I really made a tool 
that way to help other people integrate it in, uh, say, a vulnerability scanner or whatever. And it was the first tool to implement uh, IPv6 fingerprinting, both active mode and passive mode. So you have the, the history of the tool. Ah, I will uh, make a poll. Uh, who has ever heard about CNFP before? One people, two, yes, not too much. Um, it is nearly eight years old, this tool, so it's a long time. And uh, in the past, it was integrated in uh, the Backtrack uh, Linux distribution, and it's no more integrated, so I don't know why. I hope, thanks to this presentation, the Backtrack owners will integrate it again. We will see. So, current tools and their limitation. So the most well-known tool for active OS fingerprinting is, of course, Nmap. I suppose everyone has used Nmap. So the probes used in Nmap, you see there are really many, many packets sent to the target. You have TCP things, six, ICMP request, UDP, uh, TCP packets with strange flags, and all of that are um, targeted at different ports. For instance, you need to have one open port, one closed port, ICMP uh, echo reply accepted by the target, and have one closed UDP port. This is many constraints. So problem one with this approach, uh, what if some targets' answers are spoofed? Sometimes you have a filtering device in between that uh, stops the packet and answer um, by spoofing the IP address of your true target so you are fingerprinting the TCP IP stack of a device in between. And what if uh, there is, yes, so you have different TCP IP stacks, yes, total OS. This is one I really like. I don't know if you already had some strange results with Nmap OS fingerprinting, but uh, when I see total OS, uh, I always wonder if I, I targeted a true total of its uh, really uh, an operating system. Uh, problem two, uh, usually targets in today's internet conditions are really filtered, so you only have access to, to all, a few subset of Nmap tests uh, because of filtering devices, packet normalization, and stateful inspection firewalls. So if you go back to the previous slides with uh, the 15 tests Nmap is sending with such a configuration, you just end up by being able to use six TCP SYN and maybe one TCP ACN, uh, but I'm not sure this one will go through packet normalization devices. So, and problem three, it's easily detected by IDS and IPS because uh, Nmap is really uh, uh, ver verbose concerning how we craft its uh, packets. So my conclusion is and map is really okay for land side OS fingerprinting because usually you don't have filtering devices and all that stuff. But it does not suit uh, anymore in today's internet conditions. But don't get me wrong, Nmap is still a wonderful tool for many things other than OS fingerprinting and you, you, it's a must have in your toolkit. But for OS fingerprinting, I think its approach may, should be changed. Um, Regarding the passive fingerprinting tools, uh, the, the best one is Puff, written by uh, Michal Zalewski. And uh, the latest version, Puff V3, is also doing uh, passive fingerprinting over IPv6. It was not before. And it, finger, it fingerprints TCP SYN packets and TCP SYNAC packets. Um, there is no real limitation on, on this tool, but at the time, of uh, CNFP uh, introduction. Uh, Puff did not support IPv6 precision figure printing, so uh, I added some, some, something uh, in a lacking environment. Uh, the most important point for Puff is that it has a comprehensive uh, database of signatures. 
really, uh, for me, it's, it's the best tool in this category. Uh, but I will continue to, to try to, to improve CNFP3 passive engine because, uh, well, I like, I like it. So, uh, previously I spoke about uh, Nmap. Uh, the philosophy behind, behind Nmap for uh, active OS finger printing is one target IP address as uh, only one operating system. In CNFP, the philosophy is different. It's one target plus an associated TCP open port as only one operating system. So, um, the idea of that is that when you are port for direction or stuff like that, you can fingerprint uh, another target than uh, the IP address you see. So you can fingerprint protected systems thanks to that. And the idea to choose the, the test to run against the target to have the, the fingerprint was that every probe must generate an answer from the target that is we must evade uh, filtering devices that could spoof the answer. And of course, the probes must reach the target. So it must evade also IP filtering or more importantly, uh, stateful inspection uh, firewalls. At the end, we come with three TCP packets, all targeted at the same uh, open port. Uh, one is a TCP SIM, with just one uh, option, the so maximum segment size uh, TCP option. In the previous version, this option was missing, and in some cases, uh, targets would not answer to this probe at all, so it was not good. So thanks to that, uh, every target is answering to this first test. The second one is the most important uh, test. It's a TCP scene with many valid TCP options. You have selective acknowledgement, window scale, TCP timestamp, uh, no options, many options. And the last one is a TCP CNAC. Well, I, I wrote uh, mostly used for LAN side fingerprinting because as I said uh, earlier, uh, in today's internet condition uh, with a stateful uh, firewall, the CNAC will not reach the target. So it, it's okay to have this third test when you are fingerprinting from the LAN, but uh, there is an option to not use it when you are fingerprinting over the internet. So another important, important point is that one uh, operating system has only one signature in the database. The problem also with Nmap is that uh, if you customize your TCP IP stack, for instance, it will change the signature of your system. And the approach of Nmap was to add this specifically, specifically changed signature in this database. So you come with something like 2,000 signatures in a Nmap West fingerprinting database, which is quite huge. And uh, I'm not sure there is so much operating system in use in the world today. So um, the matching algorithm has to take care of this potential customization of TCP IP stack. I will speak more about the matching algorithm later on. And yes, usually, usually during uh, our tests, only one TCP packet is enough to, to have a very reliable identification of the target. It's the second test, the one with many TCP uh, options. Concerning the passive fingerprinting uh, of CNFP. In the past, uh, it was doing also fingerprinting of SYN packets and SYNAC packets. The, um, the trick I used was uh, to use signatures taken actively. I did not have different signatures for passive mode and for active mode. So I simply listened to the network, um, gathering all SYN and SYNAX packets, and applied a transformation on this packet to make looks like they were acquired in an active mode so I, I could use that to match, again, uh, signatures taken in active mode. So it was uh, one signature usable in active mode or in passive mode. Well, I thought it was cool, but in fact, uh, it, it was a failure. 
the, the problem is, as I said earlier, you don't control the, in the case of CNAC fingerprinting, you don't control the first scene. And the CNAC is built compared to the scene. So if you have, say, an embedded system with a really small TCP-IP stack with no TCP options implemented, if this embedded system is connecting to a target, the TCP, the TCP scene will be really small, and the CNAC you will see on the network to perform passive fingerprinting will also have very few TCP options. So in fact, if you want to have a good uh, uh, passive signature of all TCP uh, CNAC packets, you have to send as much as TCP scene as possible to the target pre, uh, to generate your database. Basically, say, you, you get the TCP scene as built by Linux, you do the same for FreeBSD, SunOS, and embed the system, all that. Then you send all the scene to the target you want to add in your database, and uh, you may have all possible CNAC packets for a specific operating system. This is an approach taken by uh, Puff uh, V3. So in fact, when you use Puff, uh, there is a small tool to, to send many TCP scene to a target to help add that to the database. But uh, the problem I see with that is you, you won't be sure to have all the possible um, methods for crafting TCP scenes. You, you can't do, do that for, uh, for every uh, operating system. But this approach uh, is, is efficient, so it works okay. But I, I prefer for CNFP to uh, CNFP3 only uh, fingerprint TCP scene packets because it is easier and sometimes I'm lazy. Uh, so yes, I, I said it only TCP scenes are fingerprinted. Uh, yes, for CNFP3 now I have completely separate uh, passive signature. So we have active signature in one side and uh, passive signature in uh, another side. As you can see, uh, there is only 21 signatures in the passive uh, database. So uh, I need contributions. So if you can send me uh, SIN uh, packets in pickup files and tell me this is this or this operating system, I would be happy to add it to, to the database. Uh, regarding the active signature, uh, this is nearly 300 signatures, and I consider this, uh, this uh, database to be quite uh, major right now. So, Sorry. so I will take an example of fingerprinting with a uh, map. So against one uh, of my server. And uh, you see the, the possible uh, operating system found by, uh, by a map. It's uh, FreeBSD 7x or 6x or uh, 8x. Uh, but th there is a bug here because, as you can see, I put uh, in bold you see only 7x or 6x at 98% uh, uh, confidence. And you don't see the, the 8x at 98% uh, confidence, so there is a bug in the in the output. So in fact, uh, Nmap is thinking it's a 7x or a, a 6x. Now with uh, CNFP, well, I hope it's quite readable. Well, I will do a demo, it would be easier. Um, and uh, with CNFP, you see every potential operating system with a match score. You see there is a multiple possibilities with a match score of 100%. And the tool thinks it's either 7x or 8x. And the good answer is 8.3. In the red, this is what I call uh, deformation masks. It's used in the matching algorithm to take care of the deformation that may be uh, involved because of filtering devices. I will explain that. So, CNFP3 matching algorithm. I will take as an example uh, a signature, an active signature. You have the three probes, well, in fact, the responses to the three probes, S1, S2, and S3. 
and for each you have five elements. The first one is uh, what I call binary flags. It's a comparison between some headers of IP and TCP uh, between the request and the response. In the past, it was really binary. It was zero or one. But uh, Nmap uh, has improved its uh, OS fingerprinting engine uh, a few years ago. It's, uh, it's second generation. And uh, I took some uh, comparison uh, it was doing. So now you have a four value possible, zero, one, two, three. It's no more binary, but uh, I kept the name for, uh, I want, didn't want it to, to rename all the stuff in my source code. The, the second field is well, TCP options, uh, TCP options, uh, TCP flags. Uh, I decided to put it as a signature element because well, maybe some system will uh, will answer with more flags than just SYNAC or RST. You don't know, we see strange things sometimes. The third element is the TCP window size. It's uh, one of the most important elements. There are many possible uh, values for this one, and your usual operating system is using a different value. And uh, the most important one, TCP options. So, how does that work? Uh, I simply copy and paste TCP options from the packet and values that may change, like timestamp, it always change. Uh, I fill it with FFFF, but so it's easier to match it in the database uh, with the matching algorithm. And some values, I extract them. So you see 0, 2, 0, 4, FFFF. This is the maximum segment size option. And it is moved to another field. Same is true for the TCP window scale. And, uh, well, I, I said some systems do, do strange things sometimes. For instance, HPUX uh, loves to add uh, a string, no TCP, uh, in its RST packet. So it gives a strange signature like that. So the maximum segment size is in its own, own field. And uh, thanks to that, it's easier for the deformation masks to apply and uh, be able, if a device is in between as uh, reduced MTU, for instance, the classic default MTU size is 1460, and the MSS is the, the value of the default MTU, but sometimes an MTU is reduced because of a specific uh, link connection. And uh, thanks to that, we can accept different uh, values and still match the operating system importantly before adding a new signature to the database. The window scale, same problem, extracted from the TCP options, so you can write uh, the formation masks for the window scale also. Finally, the length of TCP options in bytes. Uh, I'm not really using it, but I, I store the value if I want to improve the matching algorithm, if I have a bright idea someday. So, complete example of uh, CNFP signatures. The first one is IPv4 active signature for a FreeBSD 83 system. The second one is for the same system, but in IPv6. You see in red and yellow, the differences in the value. I spoke about the maximum segment size. You see there is a difference of 20. But besides that, in some binary flags, it's nearly the same signature. We will see why uh, it's important. In uh, passive mode, IPv4, here for Windows 7 system, you see there is no, no more the binary flags because it, it is a comparison between a request and a response, and you don't have that in passive mode, so you can completely remove it, and uh, you have a signature. Uh, you see, same problem with IPv6 uh, signature, so MTU is reduced, so I don't know why IPv6 impacts the size of MSS. The matching algorithm. Uh, we have three levels of heuristic. The first level, 
it's a perfect match. The value was not modified at all, so it's okay. The heuristic one accepts some minor deformations uh, on the packet. And the second one, it's major deformation, but in fact, it, we can completely ignore a parameter because, well, in the current context, it is of no use and uh, it does not help you identify a stacked operating system, so you can match with a heuristic 2 mode. And uh, so these deformation masks are really important for the matching algorithm because this is what takes care of devices modifying uh, the packets with reduced MTU or stuff like that. Modified window size, deactivated TCP options. You see an example of a signature completely written in uh, heuristic one mode. And as you can see, it's written with regular expressions. For instance, here, 0, 1, with question mark. It just says this option may not exist. So if it's not there, the algorithm will continue to match the signature. But the matching score will be reduced, of course, because of the deformation. An example of a non-deformed uh, signature. So this is a, the reason for this long string BH0, FH0, all the stuff. It says we have match uh, in perfect condition. So now, the same target scan from a different network with a modified MTU. So you see, the match score is now 98% uh, because the uh, MTU is lower, but it matched with the heuristic one uh, regarding the, that value. But you still identify the system without adding uh, another signature to the database. So each, each element has a weight. Uh, the less deformed the element, higher is the weight. Uh, in heuristic 2, uh, the weight is simply uh, zero. It does not help you, so it does not cont uh, continue for the matching score. And most discriminant elements have higher weights. For instance, TCP options and window size, it's the most discriminant uh, elements, so it gives uh, many points for the matching score. Yes. The how the lookup is done in the database. Um, basically, you find uh, intersections between uh, all these uh, signatures. You take the S1 and you search all the ID in the database that can match all the five elements of S1. Yeah, then you do that for S2, you do that for S3, and finally you have three circles, and you try uh, <coughs> to find the intersection between these three circles. If there is no match, you do that, but only for S1 and S2. If there is still no intersection, you only take S2, because it's a better test. And for hypothesis, it's exactly the same algorithm. Of course, signatures are very similar. But something uh, is a little bit different. If you don't have the signature for an IPv6 target, you can match it against IPv4 signatures. So this works really great. You have only two to three percent difference when you do that. So even if your signature database is not complete, you can still identify the target. And for passive fingerprinting, same algorithm against passive signatures. The database, it's SQLite based because it's easy. Everyone knows SQL, so why uh, creating a proprietary database? So uh, I gave the, the number in the database previously. Uh, I don't integrate every signature. I must trust the signature, because some, sometimes I have a contribution. But I see that clearly this signature has been modified by a device in between. So I can't add it to the database. I only add signatures um, taken in perfect condition. Usually, the operating system is running in a virtual machine with no filtering devices, no packet normalization, nothing. 
and I have that to the database. Uh, I keep all backup traces, so I can regenerate all the signatures if I want. I can work on another matching algorithm and test if it still fits. I can do many things with it. And that's really uh, a good database of uh, scene packets. I have uh, scene packets for passive mode, but I don't have many for that. But for the active mode, I have many uh, pickup files. Uh, for passive mode, I guess, I need contributors, so don't hesitate to, to ping me with uh, scene packets. Demo one. Okay. So, what I will do is uh, to scan uh, a C class. I will do it in live, so I hope it will work. So how do you call the tool? Is it a uh, big enough? Yes, I suppose. CNFP3-target. The network you want to, to scan. In previous version of CNFP, there was no scene scanner. You just had to put one IP address and one open port. That was just what you, you could do with that. Now there is many options. You could scan an entire C class or whatever. Specify more than uh, one open port. Uh, here, I put one open port because it would be uh, uh, quicker. So there was mode. Active two. I spoke about it. Uh, it's, it's to send only uh, the two first tests because over the internet, the CNAC will probably will drop by the target. So you accelerate uh, stuff by uh, using this uh, parameter. Threshold uh, eighty. I don't want to print. Uh, signature with a match score below uh, 80. So first step, uh, scene scan against uh, the C class. It uh, takes uh, a few seconds usually, except if my uh, Wi-Fi connection is broken, which seems the case, like uh, in all demos. Yes, OK. So you have many, uh, many uh, outputs for the tool, because I put there was one. And it's still lagging. OK, yes. So here you see uh, one of the targets. Stop to move. OK. Um, you have the put. Well, the internet connection is really shaggy because uh, I don't have a response for the first test. That's really strange. But you have a response for the second test. And you see it's still matching uh, at a 98% uh, score for either a Linux 2.4x or a 2.6x. Uh, well, I put in, in parentheses the exact version, but for me, US fingerprinting can determine the exact version. You would just can determine the family, which is usually good, good enough. So, this one, no answer to this two. Mm -hmm. So, you have Linux, and here you see uh, Linux 3.2x or 3.0x with a 98% uh, score. So, I will stop the demo here for this one. The so default modules used uh, in CNFP uh, is to scene scan the target, to use the CNFP3 database of fingerprints, to use the active mode, so the search module is also the active uh, search, and to output results on the console. We'll see more output modules. So the architecture is now um, plugin based to be more modular. Usually, if you want uh, to take input, say, from a file, Instead, instead of uh, from the command line, you can write an input module that will be that will read the file, analyze it, and feed the engine with uh, whatever you want the source to be. And uh, improvement on the matching algorithm. Previously, the deformation masks were written manually. Uh, it was quite tricky to to write it because uh, I had to test it and see if uh, it was performing well in the field. Uh, so it was not really great. So I modified the matching algorithm to try every combination 
uh, and to output a score. So the score is also easier for humans to understand the result because not everyone is uh, familiar with deformation mask. Uh, well, so the, probe, uh, the first probe has now TCP option. So passive mode is autonomous. Ten minutes. So we need to go quickly. So and plugin based, of course. So the global architecture, you see you have an input module which uh, generates next objects. It's intermediate objects you can feed to the mode. Uh, the mode then feed the search engine, which just look up in the database and finally approach uh, result objects. So you can display it in whatever way you want, on the console, on a CSV file, XML file, whatever. So many, you have many, uh, implemented modules right now, I will go quickly. Uh, yes, I will speak more about the, the scene scanner. It's uh, written in Perixs. Uh, for th those not familiar with Perixs, it's really near C language for performance reasons. And uh, it's efficient enough, uh, I consider. For instance, you can scan a C class in 20 minutes for a top 10 ports. Uh, with a default configuration of 200 packets per second and three tries, it's around 10 kilobytes per second. It's the default configuration. You can specify uh, more packets per second if you want. It's a KISS algorithm. You choose. Uh, TCP packets are written directly at layer 4. No need to bother with crafting IP headers. Let the system do that. We don't want to spoof IP addresses anyway. And it uses the CNFP uh, magic SIM packet. The input connect module is interesting. It's uh, like my old uh, passive uh, fingerprinting failure. But this one, uh, it works only from Linux because uh, Linux TCP scene is uh, the same as the one in uh, active fingerprinting. And uh, in fact, it simply does a TCP connect to the target, listen to scene and the, the corresponding CNAC. And thanks to that, you can uh, generate the signature of the target, and match it in the database. It's really effective when you are from a Linux system. Um, and it's no IDS will bother with uh, telling uh, we are fingerprinted because it's just a TCP connection to, to a web server. So no problem with IDSs. It's a really stealthy approach. Uh, app Discover, it's quite interesting. You are on your LAN, LAN and you want to fingerprint all your uh, LAN hosts. So you use app discovery, you send app requests to all the IP addresses of the, of the network to find live hosts, and uh, you perform active fingerprinting on them. And for IPv6, I use a, a trick. Uh, you do the app scanning for IPv4 addresses, you have a list of valid MAC addresses, and you apply the EUI64 uh, transform against MAC addresses, so you have a FE80 uh, IPv6 of your packet. So you don't have to scan the FE80 uh, slash 64 to, to find your target. So demo 2. This one should work. So the ID uh, to launch the tool, you use the input of this cover module. I will not do it because it will take too much time. You output the result to pick up files, so you can replay it with the second command line here. So you, you gather all uh, pick up files. You can output it as a CSV file, just to show you spoke about it. And finally, we use the CSV file to output the results uh, using UbiGraph which is, um, I will deactivate an option because it's too slow. So as you can see, you can visualize your home network in a wonderful 3D uh, manner. Uh, there is a um, uh, colors, blue is for Windows systems, uh, red for uh, BSD systems, and green for Linux systems. In fact, every uh, node is one open port, I can display the level, but it will be very slow, so I don't show the level. So th this is an open port every time. <laughs> so 
so I don't have time, so no demo stream. But it's the same thing with many, many nodes, basically. And uh, you, with such many nodes, it's over the internet, you can really see some target with portrait direction. So the nodes may be from different color for the same IP address, but well. So, conclusion. Uh, I tried to make many improvements on the tool, uh, the matching uh, algorithm mainly. Uh, it's better, you have a match score, so that's good. You might can understand easily if the tool is confident or not on the fingerprint of the target. The architecture has been completely rewritten, so you can write your own input modules or output modules mainly to store results in a database if you have a, a database. For, that's really awesome for scanning the internet. Um, and in fact, uh, I didn't say, but uh, the input module gives next object, and uh, each next object is forked, so it's a par parallel scanning engine. There is a flag to specify how many jobs you want to do in parallel to speed up the things. Uh, so improvement on the passive fingerprinting also, but for me it does not compete with POF today, and uh, many, many more features. Uh, a plugin to add signatures in the database. Previously, it was hard to add uh, signatures. Mainly, uh, I was the only one being able to do that. Uh, now there is a tool, so everyone can do that. A flag to update the database. It downloads the file from the internet, every time you check some, and if it's newer, it updates, stuff like that. Logging modules, and you can design your, your own uh, modules right now. That's a cool feature, uh, I hope. So to, to get informed of the release, uh, probably today. You can follow Nesworicon uh, and I will tweet about it when it's uh, released. Questions? Do we have a